Welcome to the fourth video on this titration set on how to do the calculations. If you want more practice on how to do titration solution stoichiometry, please go to the top video up here and you can see how to get to the webpage where I've got more stoichiometry sets to practice. So these are the results that we got from the titration 23.65, 23.65 and so what I go down to here is for the 0.5 mils I started off with this solution that was a standard solution that we made up in the first video and then the third video we did the actual titration and that's how we got the 23.65 mils alright now what we're going to do is the propagation and uncertainty on that so what I do is I C equals N on V that formula that gets me this value here and that tells me how many moles of NaOH I used in order to neutralize the HCl because the stoichiometry is one mole of NaOH is to one mole of HCl I can therefore say that I also that amount of moles of NaOH is the same as that amount of moles of HCl now to do the uncertainty propagation the instrument has this is the mills here and so 0.001 uh, uh, is 1 mil and the burette read in increments of 0 0.1 mil so the uncertainty is plus or minus 0 0.005 mils and so we have all of those zeros down there and that's our uncertainty now we're going to be timesing and dividing down here so we need to get a percentage uncertainty so we take that uncertainty is 0 0.00005 mils and divide it by this number here and that gets us 0.2 percent and so if we wanted to work out the actual uncertainty the raw value of that we would times that value by 0 0.002 okay because this is a percentage here so percentage is already times by 100 so there we have the number of moles is 0 0.012605 plus or minus 2 percent we can take that down here. We're now trying to work out what the concentration of the HCl, this is our end game here, uh, so that's number of moles on volume. So we've just worked out the number of moles here by doing the titration and what we actually had was we pulled out 25 mils of the stuff and we used that using a volumetric pipette. Now I have to go from memory here and I, I'm pretty sure that this is the uncertainty of the volumetric pipette. Uh, please forgive me if it's wrong, there's a 25 mil uh, volumetric pipette. Uh, if that's wrong, uh, it's not really going to matter to be honest because it is, it is so minor uh, that it actually doesn't matter. It's this, this gets overridden by a factor of 10. Uh, and so what we have here is again the uncertainty. So we have percentage uncertainty of the first one and the volume here is 25 mils and that's the next uncertainty we need to convert that to a percentage uncertainty because when you times and divide you add percentage uncertainties but when you do calculations with plus or minus you just add the raw uncertainties together so that's much easier so because this is times and divide I have to get the percentage uncertainties and add those together so 0.03 divided by 25 mils gets us this number here and so the total the, the propagated uncertainty here is 0.212%. Now in the meantime what I've done here is I've worked out what the actual concentration is so 0.012 moles divided by 25 mils gets us 0.042 and what I have to do is I need to convert my uncertainty uh, find out what my raw uncertainty is so I need to take that 0.0, uh, 0.5042 and times that by 0.0 212% so that's actually going to be times by 0.00212 and that gets us a value of here of 0.001106 now uncertainties are always given to one significant figure so I need to just go down to the most sig fig get rid of those and so that's my final raw uncertainty uh, this is uh, my final uncertainty percentage uncertainty but when you give final answers you need to give an actual value so once I've got that 0 0.001 I then also need to convert my final figure to the same number of unit placings as that 
So I can only go to three, six, uh, three decimal places back there. So I need to take my one, two, three, and my o, oh, five, o, oh, four, and get rid of that two. And so my final answer is point five o four plus or minus point o o one uh, molar HCL. Okay, now the final thing you need to do is work out percent error. This has given you an idea of the precision of your experiment. And what you're finally doing here is working out the percent error. So you take the experimental and minus that from the theoretical and just take the raw value of that, could be either way around, uh, and then divide that by the theoretical, and that gives us a 0.8% error. So that's how systemic there, systematic. systematic error, uh, that's an idea of our accuracy. Uh, this one here uh, is, it, is to do with our random error, and that gives us an idea of our precision. Now I'm going to go through a little bit, the same exact same thing you do for the 3 molar. Now let me just look at what the difference is here. The difference is I had three molar here, and so and I had uh, here is less. Here is I had less volume, and so what that ended up mean meaning was the uncertainty here is more significant, and so that gave us a much higher percent uncertainty, as one point two percent. If you look at the other one here, I used a larger volume, I only had a point two percent, and so of course that carries through. So the number of moles NOH was number of moles HCl. And then I've got to work out what the concentration of that HCl was. And so I've carried down that 1.2% here. And again, this aliquot using the volumetric pipette wasn't significant. Uh, and so what I have is a 1.2. And that little uh, bit of the volumetric pipette added on the end. And so if I take 1.2% of that 0 0.504, I get a much larger number now, I get a point plus or minus point 0.6, so I need to take that to one sig fig and then uh, take this to the same number of unit placings and so I get a very similar answer and I also get a very similar error. So my precision uh, is the only real difference here, It's so this there is a larger random error, it's point oh oh 0.006 molar, or is this one was only point oh oh 0.001. So I've got a, a very similar answer with less precision and I've got the same systematic error accuracy here. So I hope that made sense. Please put comments below if you need more explanation and please go to my website if you'd like more practice problems. And don't forget to subscribe.